What's up YouTube? This is another episode of Browse on Aquatics coming at you here with a very special little update here. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you all of my outdoor projects that I've been do, uh, taking care of, whatever, I, I don't know. Uh, these are just the outdoor projects that I've been uh, doing lately. Stumbling over my words today. That's what's up. But, yeah, I'm just going to kind of run you through the whole place here. I've got a few going. Uh, they're they're not really anything particularly extravagant, but they're pretty cool. I'll start you off over here with this one. This doesn't have any animal inhabitants in it, but it does have a pretty good amount of plants here. I've got some hornwort hornwort growing in here. Quite a bit of it. I mean, it's all over the place. Uh, I've got some new plants here, some frog bit. This is pond grown frog bit, so it's not the the dainty little stuff that you'd find in uh, fish stores and whatnot. The like the Amazon frog bit. Uh, if you let it grow out in a pond, it'll eventually get these long stems like that. I got these from a good friend of mine at my local aquarium club. This is also frog bit, but it's just not quite as mature as the other piece. And I have a lot of it in here. All that stuff right there with the big flat round leaves, that's all frog bit. Uh, and then one more plant that I have in here is, of course, my water sprite that I've been trying to grow out for a while. I've got a good, good little bit in here. Just going. Uh, the next one over here has some more new plants in it and also some familiar faces from the fish room is in this one. Uh, in this tank I have all these pieces of water high synth. Let me pull out the biggest one here for you. Look at these roots. They're solid 10-12 inch long roots there. And then the top of it of course. Let me just easily bigger than uh, my palm. And then the fish that are in here, let me pull out this piece of duckweed, you always got to pull out those little uh, parasites. <laughs> but uh, let's see if I can find them. They're very reclusive despite their bright coloring, hint hint. Might be able to see them down there. Nope, the glare is too bad. Actually, wait, there we go. You can see some of them down in that area. And those fish are the platies that I had inside in the planet tank. They're just chilling in there, providing some food for that water hyacinth. Uh, I figured I'd put them in there. It would, pro it would provide, a, you know, it'd be good for both the plants and the fish. The plants get the nutrients from their waste. The fish will benefit because, you know, mosquitoes will lay the eggs in the water and they'll they'll be able to eat the eat the mosquito larvae, which is good for them, very, very good for them. Plus the water hyacinth, uh, those long bushy roots will be able to uh, do a very good job at protecting their fry. So moving down into this one, this is a little 10 gallon tank that I had sitting around, so I figured I might as well go ahead and set it up. Uh, what I've got going in here are a couple of these freshwater mussels. I only have two. I'm going to go collect some more eventually. But for now, there's only two. Uh, put some sand in there for them so they can dig around. And then the plant that I have in here is all of my dwarf water lettuce. I decided I would try and separate all the other plants out the best I can. Just so I don't have any uh, hitchhikers, I guess. If someone bought, say, some some of the water lettuce and they got some of another plant, whatever, uh, I'm sure they wouldn't mind, but still, I like to keep things as neat as possible. That's the big one. I'm going to move on to that one last. And then this quick little one here, that's the 20-gallon planted tank that was inside. I'm going to fill it up and leave it out here for the rest of the summer, breed something in it, grow some plants, whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, okay, so this little tub right here, 
is the biggest of all of them. It's about four, I think it's like 50 gallons or something like that, 48, 50. Uh, what I've got going in here are majority of the plants. The, all the uh, rooting plants that I had are in this tank. Uh, and then the fish are some, well, they're all those native fish right now. So that would be the Gambushia mosquito fish as well as the yellow bullhead catfish and the uh, the speckled killifish. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you some of the plants that I've got going on in here. Uh, I'm going to have to pull them out because they are in each individual pot, so that won't be a difficult task to do. But before I get onto the potted ones, I'm going to go ahead and get onto this one because it's kind of just asking to be showed. It's just floating at the top. That's what it does whenever it rains. But this is the uh, dwarf red lily. Uh, it's still kicking. It hasn't shot up any of the tall. Uh, it hasn't shot up any of the tall uh, stems where the leaves kind of float on the top. It stayed very compact, which I'm liking. Uh, I'm not a r really a huge fan of uh, whenever these things have a bunch of very tall stem shooting up to the top of the water put that back in the water what we have right here is a little bit of the narrow leaf anacris this is the this is most of the plant I have a little bit of it in another pot because I had too much to put into this pot but yeah that's what's up there with the anacris this would be the dwarf sagittaria that I've got kind of growing out in here uh, I guess growing it out for a friend I guess keeping it for a friend whatever uh, whatever it may be here's one this is probably one of my more special plants I have in here uh, this is a long time resident of the channel here as far as plants go this is the Anubius Nana gold uh, it hasn't been growing very fast. I mean, I know Anubius isn't a fast grower at all, but I mean, even for Anubius standards, it has been growing very slowly. Um, so I kind of put it out here hoping maybe the natural sunlight will help it out a lot. So I'm just going to leave it out here for the summer, and then whenever it starts to get cold, move it back in, and hopefully that'll uh, bump up its growth a little bit. But I've got two tiny little pieces in there one right there and one right there uh... this is a multi-layer, all, all these are multi-layered uh, substrate beds in each of the pots uh... some of them consist of different layering and whatnot but for the most part they are uh... in the clay pots anyways they're a layer of sand for them to uh... just for good rooting material and then on top of the sand i put some uh... All, all different kinds of dry fertilizers and then on top of that I put some uh, some of the fluorite on that and then that's basically what it's uh, what it's made out of really with uh, a couple of them including this one right here the layering is different it's sand a little layer of fluorite and then another layer of sand and then uh, there's also some dry ferts in there as well but the reasoning I do it like that is because the Anubius Nana Gold, uh, the roots were very tiny, so I had to make sure that I had a very soft substrate for, uh, to dig them into. Because as most of you probably know, you're not supposed to bury the rhizome of the uh, of the plant because it will melt back and turn into goo, as I have experienced personally. Now you may be uh, wondering, you know, what on earth is that thing? Uh, for any of you big time pond junkies, or anyone who's ever tried out lilies, you may know what this is. But this is kind of like the packaging, I guess, they sell you lilies in. It has the bulb inside, and you're supposed to keep it in this. Uh, what was this? I think it was coconut husk. And it's got rocks mixed into it to weigh it down, and then some mesh over it to keep it together. And I guess over time, the plant will just grow out of this. I haven't had any luck with it, really, but I'm not sure how long it's supposed to take for these to grow. 
But yeah, I think it's supposed to grow right out the top here. There's a little bit of peat moss there. But yeah, that's one thing that I've been uh, dealing with lately is trying to grow that thing out. Um, next plant here is that mystery plant that was in the planet tank. I'm still not sure what it is. Uh, I'm thinking it's either baby tears or um, pearlweed. Uh, and don't get baby tears mixed up with dwarf baby tears because they are different. Dwarf baby tears is just a very refined version of the original plant, baby tears. Baby tears is originally a stem plant, but people have been able to uh, refine it down into a uh, into a carpet. But yeah, this is it. I have one stem, and then that stem is growing off. A little uh, a little baby stem there. Once it gets tall enough, I'll clip it and keep on. You know, eventually I'll just have a bunch of it. But originally it was a tiny little stem, maybe about that tall, that just found its way with uh, the anacris that I bought. Now here is the Ludwigia, Ludwigia repens broadleaf. Uh, it's growing out pretty good. Uh, I've been having a little bit of trouble keeping this stuff in the substrate, so. I have a good feeling whenever I put this stuff into the into the pond there, it's going to go all over the place in the water. But yeah, this is it. I have, I don't know, somewhere around six stems at this point. Maybe more. I don't know. And this is what I'm talking about. You guys should remember this plant here. This is the large piece of Anubius nanji. And this stuff has skyrocketed in growth okay ever since I put it out here in the pond I gotta back that up so you can see the whole thing but ever since I put it out here in the pond the growth has just exploded look at that it compared to my hand uh, and I bought it you know much smaller than this uh, it was probably only about I don't know, probably about this many leaves right here that I'm having in my hand whenever I originally got it. And now it's turned into all this. And it seems like every day whenever I come out here and check it, it's got a new leaf. Like, this right here is a new leaf. This is a new leaf. Uh, a few of these I remember were new leaves. I remember whenever this one was growing out. Uh, but yeah, it has officially uh, attached itself to the driftwood naturally. So I, I was able to cut all the string off. But now it's time to get into the fun part, which is the fish in the tank. These guys, I'm just now moving out here. Uh, and these are the... Excuse that, the dogs are wrestling in the house. Um, and these are the... Uh, what are these? The uh, Aquidens Mete. And I've got eight of them. All of them are still doing good. It's actually about time to put these in the water, so I better go ahead and dump those. And they're all doing good. I decided to move them out here and just get them a little bit more growth. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the mosquito larvae are, are helping you know, everybody in this situation. And then the last things that I've got to show in here are the native fish. I got the gambusia, the speckled killifish as well as the yellow bullhead. So, that's the pond update. So with that said, comment, rate, subscribe, respect the hobby, respect the hobbyist, and most importantly, respect the fish. I hope you enjoyed the video, and peace out.